Good morning. Today is day four, and we stayed in Greens Beach last night. And my birthday is today. My hubby gave a good surprise, and I got a new iPhone 12 Pro last night. And we are on our way to Lavender Estate in Brightstone, and I'll see you there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'll just pop up some more. <laughs> 
Uh, you had a cake? You can have it. Oh, you got that one. Yeah. 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 Okay. I've got a bit of cake. We have had two pieces of cake left. Yeah. yeah. And got to take the cake too? Yes, please. It's not very, it's a bit scrappy. Yeah, that's right. Chocolate fudge. Thank you. On the cake. It's a little crummy. Mm. This is good. Oh, it's 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 good. It's hot, okay? Thank yeah, it's you. quite hot. Yeah, oh, oh it's no, hot. Yeah, yeah. 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 It tastes a little bit like peppermint, yeah. but it's good. Yeah. Next, we might have some yeah. around the drinks. Take the hand out from here. Then we're going to go for a short walk to the lavender fields. We're going to talk a bit about the history of the farm and why the farm's out here. We'll talk a bit about how old it is uh, and the owners of the farm. We'll talk a bit about the type of lavender we grow and why we grow it. Uh, then we walk down to the distillery where they're distilling oil here today. So we only distill oil for about three weeks of the year. So you visiting today, you've come in the perfect time. You get to see it purple and you get to see us uh, distilling oil. So the farm started back in 1922 in Lilydale. Did anyone drive from Launceston to come here? Yep, so 20 minutes down the road is, is Lilydale and that's where the farm originally started in 1922. The original owner of the farm came out from England with his family, specifically to grow lavender somewhere in the world. Uh, he was a pharmacist and a chemist, and he, he was very clever at what he did, and he wanted to grow the world's finest lavender. So he looked for a place to grow it in the world. He could have gone to Provence in France, but there are a lot of other people growing it there, and that's the home of the true uh, perfume grade lavender. So he chose this part of the world because um, latitude-wise, it's very similar to Provence in France. Our climate where we sit here in the uh, Southern Hemisphere is very similar climate latitude-wise uh, to the Northern Hemisphere. And the type of lavender that he wanted to grow for perfume only is a French lavender that grows well in Provence in France. So where we sit up here at our elevation of just under 800 metres and we're, we're quite coastal, it's med with our very Mediterranean for Tasmanian standards. So in 1922 he set about growing his seeds uh, of lavender. After about 10 years he had enough seed to get processed into oil and he had the oil certified. The oil was certified in, in the UK and England to be a true perfume grade style lavender. And that's what's important. There's lots of different oils and essential oils, but the lavender that was grown out in Lilydale in 1922 is the same lavender that we grow out here uh, uh, today. Um, usually I do the rest of the talk in front of the fields, but because it's a little bit windy and it's a big group, I'll, I'll do it here and then we'll walk past it. Uh, back in 1930s, in the 1940s, he realised he didn't have enough land to grow his lavender because to cultivate the lavender you need around 250 kilos of lavender to make two litres of oil. Um, so he decided to look for more land. So in 1947, he bought this property where we are here today. It's called Bridistow Estate. Out here, back in the day, it was to traditional farming ground. There was sheep and barley. Uh, it's very agricultural. It's very, uh, uh, it has very good properties for pretty much growing anything. So he chose to, um, to grow his lavender. How we grow the lavender today was just the same as they did in the 1930s. We don't grow from seed and we don't need bees. Uh, we grow from cutting. So the cycle of the lavender that we grow, it's very seasonal plant. It only flowers in the height of summer. And when it's at its highest in summer, the lavender flower goes purple. And those purple flower buds is what we use to make the lavender to go into lavender tea. And it's what we distill to go into the lavender oil and the like. So the other, 
So he set about uh, from cuttings. So after summer, when it's all harvested, what happens is the plant goes into autumn mode. It slows down for winter. In winter, when it's at its coldest, our farm staff go out and they pull the plants out of the ground roots and all, and we make cuttings. And it's those cuttings that are put back in the ground again. And the same process has been happening for 100 years. So the plant stock that we have out there, it's the same plant stock that originally happened in 1922. So next year the estate is 100 years old and that plant stock goes back to uh, 100 years because it's only ever been uh, cultivated from, from cutting. So why they do it that way is that it, it always gets the, uh, the, the perfect quality oil time and time again because the gene of the plant is the same. As much as we've got lovely different fields of lavender, there's actually five variants of lavender and we'll walk past them as we go out there. Oh, thank you. Who would you like one of these? We have you can have the first one to try the lavender lemonade. There you go. Uh, um, the five different varieties of lavender are, are from five, five different gene stock of the same lavender. Uh, and it's important to know because a lot of the fields come on to flower earlier than others and some of the lavender fields come later. Um, so that means that we can keep the season open and happy so that you get to see lavender all, uh, you know, for a good part of two months. The usual life cycle of the lavender is only going to be about three weeks. Uh, that the Mama. particular plant's going to be, um, going to be in, in, in flower. So, uh, lavender ice cream here, if you want to try. The six dollars. In 1947, when he purchased this, the size of the farm was about the same as it is now, 250 acres. But the actual uh, working land is 125 acres. So what you can see is 125 acres of lavender fields. The fields go way past the rise, right back to the other 50 acres past where you can see those, those tractors and they go right down to the road that you could have caught a glimpse as, as you come in. So there's more lavender fields than what we can see here. As I mentioned before, there's different plant stock of, of lavender that they grow, the different genomes. There's five, and that, there's, there's test beds of all of them behind you. Um, they all flower at, at different times, and some, some of the lavender has better oil quantity in it than what uh, others do, and some of the lavender also has uh, a brighter purple colour, so it enables us to use it for a lot of different things. The key thing with lavender, if people go lavender at home, they'll realise that I, when I said to you this flower is only for two months of the year, there are other lavenders that will flower for eight or nine months of the year. And the key question is, people often ask, they say, why didn't they plant that? Because we have more time to get more visitors to visit. Uh, the reason is that this French type of lavender that we grow uh, is grown for its perfume qualities, more so than its aesthetics. So if we wanted beautiful purple fields, we could grow lavender, we could grow lots of different products. But we, the primary reason for the farm is for the oil, and then to put the oil into products. Uh, is, the, is the key reason for it. Why we can put the oil into that food that you ate, is, which makes it very special, our lavender doesn't have something in it called camphor. Camphor is naturally occurring and it's in a lot of essential oils and there's nothing wrong with it uh, with, except for the fact that you shouldn't be digesting it because it's a byproduct of petroleum. So naturally occurring there's no camphor content in the lavender so it's quite edible uh, it's uh, if you like lavender and like in the lavender tea or lavender scone that is nice the good thing for us the possums don't think it's edible either <laughs> so that's quite easy there's no irrigation here uh, the plants uh, you know since this farm was established in the 40s and 50s we rely on natural rainfall which up here is about 900 mils a year and the reason that we have the curvature in the rows is to take advantage of the rainfall. So that when it rains, those, the rain runs between the rows and lavender. The rows have been planted to take advantage of our hilly um, slope that we have here, so that the water dries off. If, 
if anyone here's tried to grow lavender and they've not been successful, it's usually because it's been watered too much. Give it too much love and it will die. Uh, in its natural state, this French style lavender, Lavandula augustifolia, would grow in the side of a mountain without actually any soil in France uh, and in Europe. It doesn't need much to grow. It's extremely hardy uh, and giving it too much love will um, will make the system. But you'll see lots of bees around the lavender. The only job these bees are doing for us is making honey. We don't need them for pollination or anything. They're just happily around. A day like today, if I wasn't talking so loudly, you, that's all you can hear the bees. And a lovely walk to do. Out in the middle there's two elm trees and there's a little seat. If anyone had 10 minutes, I suggest going out there. It's a lovely view, um, view looking back. With the planting, once the plants are around four years old, as I say, they're pulled up and we make the cuttings and replant them. That's why you can see that sparse field down there by those metal drums by the lake. Uh, that's only been planted this year. That's why it looks a little bit miserable. This is two years old here. These plants are two years old. The other plants that have been cut that are more full down there are coming to three and four years old. Now the ones that come into a nice uh, bush. Uh, this winter, they'll be the next plants to be cut up. Now we're going to distillery. Diesel tanks. So with, with everything going on with the COVID enclosures and uncertainty of travel, one thing that we said over winter, we knew this was going to be purple. We didn't we just there's a lot of changes that can happen, but this was uh, always going to be purple. Well, the two products that we manufacture are from the lavender is the dried lavender which goes into lavender tea, uh, into our lavender teas, it goes into, in, into our, some of our baked food, and it's also the lavender oil. Now the lavender oil goes into, into cosmetics, it goes into perfumes, uh, personal care items, and it can go into things like the ice cream has the oil, it's very versatile to how we use it. If anyone wants, gets excited and inspired when they're here going to cook with lavender, I suggest look it up first online. Our website has the recipes. Uh, a little too much is, is too much. And you don't need very much to make it. Uh, when they're making our, our ice cream, 20 litres of ice cream has literally about three drops of lavender in it. Okay, So it's extremely, it's extremely powerful and too much will sit on, on your lips. So, so over what happens here is uh, the dried flour usually gets processed in here, they've stopped doing that. Over uh, when they're processing the dried flour, the smell of the flour, you can smell it right down the end of the road when the wind's blowing the opposite direction. There's dust and there's flour that's coming up. If you're up there, you're saying, gosh, that smells lovely and that's wonderful. If you're down here, you just get covered in lavender dust uh, and everything. So in here is where we distill um, the oil. So the flour has stopped and our farm managers decided now's the time to distill the oil. So the, the room that we've got for distillation in here uh, could only hold around six or eight people. So I'm going to tell you how we make the lavender and there's a short video to watch on it and that, just take your time and, and cycle um, through the room uh, if, you, if you don't mind. So what happens is the farmer, the um, the tractor goes between the rows of lavender and cut about a third of the crop off until he has around 250 kilos of lavender in a big bin in the back. They bring it into our distillery and we pop it into a still. In the bottom of our still there's boiling water. They seal the top of the still up and the boiling water causes the steam and that steam goes up through the basket of lavender. At the top of the still, they cool that steam down and we turn that back into a liquid. And that liquid is called what we call a hydrosol, a lavender water, and it's also got the lavender oil in it. Once that liquid uh, comes back down again, it drips down and you'll see the whole process in there. We separate the oil from the hydrosol. 
So the raw oil then goes into a big bin and at the end of the season we call um, we blend our oil. What the blending means is we're blending the oil from the different five clones that we have out there in the property to get the same oil uh, quality. Because this saved the, the process of uh, distillation from the time they put their buckets, baskets of lavender in and by the time we get the oil out it's about one hour. <laughs> it's very, very quick and it's very, very short. That's so that we only get the sweetest of lavender that comes through under the distillation. They don't distill it for longer, so we don't get any poor quality notes uh, come through. The other item that's good to know about when you're walking around, um, you won't see many weeds. And uh, if you do, come and tell me where they are, we'll pull them out. Um, most of the farms hand weeded. Uh, we pride ourselves on keeping it that way uh, because if there's any weed load that goes into the distillation, it's an impurity into the oil. Uh, and so we want the purest oil up, oil that there is. So what we'll do, if people can come through and just we'll take your time milling out, and I can answer some questions. Come through. gift shop now.